first, so great. First of all, Dad, thanks for being here. Yes, um, my pleasure. First of all, we have an incredible team. Amazing. Uh, Rob is goals. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Vlad is goals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have an awesome team, but secondly, and their hair is goals. Yeah, seriously. But uh, the second thing that I wanted to mention on, on top of that is that that family that you guys just witnessed, that you saw in that video, um, is actually connected um, to Vlad's aunt um, in Ukraine. Vlad's aunt, Vlad and Andre, uh, awesome people in our, in our, on our team, in our church. Their parents been in our church, um, both involved. Uh, uh, Vlad's dad, Igor, plays guitar, uh, and then uh, Vlad's mom, Tanya, uh, she's one of our translators um, for service and stuff. So they're incredible. Amazing. Um, and worthy of praise, worthy of uh, the, the celebration. You guys are so Love faithful. You. And I, I just wanted to say this, that I think Vlad has been serving longer than I have in this wow. church. So like, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm, and, I'm always trying to catch up to Vlad. And his dad was playing guitar before, well, while you guys were in youth ministry, yeah. Vlad's dad was playing guitar uh, on our worship team. Right. And Vlad basically fired him and, uh, <laughs> and put his brother in there, I think. <laughs> oh <laughs> and then he re gosh. Re brought him back onto the yeah, team recently. Yeah, 100%, 100%. But yeah, so that family is based in Ukraine right now. Um, and I just wanted to read something that Vlad had written, just some info for us, if, if it's okay to yeah. share. Um, that this family, um, they have seven children between the ages of three and 14 and another child on the way, actually. Both parents are cancer survivors and cram into a small sedan car every Sunday to go to church together. Um, and all of their children share uh, clothes, they share everything that they got. Um, and uh, they're all smart, intelligent students, but they've been teased in school for not having supplies, backpacks and whatnot. And so they would use reuse, reusable grocery bags for their books. Um, and so we, as a team, because of Vlad's family bringing this up and, and wanting to bless them and, and extend the generous, generosity of our church to them, uh, we, we were able to bless them with, with backpacks, school supplies, all in time for this new school year. Wow. Um, and so they, obviously you, you saw it, they were ecstatic, praising Jesus, even at a young age. And so I just think our church is so cool because it's layered, it's not just you know, we, we see a need and we we supply for the need, but like it's deep rooted in family and connections and people that are faithful through the years and and bring stuff to our attention and we respond so yeah. well. So I just wanted to you know so make great. mention of that and and um, there's so many more that we're helping and oh um, yeah absolutely it's just so uh, precious to be able to serve people and to be able to give and to be able to uh, make a difference in people's lives in, in our inner city. Uh, in our neighborhoods, near our church buildings and facilities, and of course, around the nation and around the world. We're, we're given everywhere we can yeah. and more than ever before. And so thank you for being faithful 100%. with your giving. And, you know, it's, giving is all about relationship. It's all about connection. Even tithing is all about thanking God. And like Rob was saying earlier, just um, thanking him for what he's already done and having faith for what he can do. And... We give because we're so grateful that Jesus saved us. Like 10% of my, of my income is nothing compared to 100% of my soul. Mm. And 100% of my soul has been saved. 100% right. of my family is saved. 100% of maybe your family is saved. And so in, in, in just thinking about all that God has done for us, giving back to him, to me is the easiest thing in the world to do yeah. when you realize all that he's already done for for us and all yeah. that he's already done for me and um I, and, and that's not what i that wasn't my plan to talk <laughs> about that but you brought up you talked about community which i really mm -hmm. want to talk about how connection yeah you said that, that helping a family because there's a connection with another family in the family of our church that's really how life should be we're not called to live alone we're not called mm. to be an island to ourselves now in during the pandemic and during the season we have been blessed with the opportunity to stay connected right. online even though we're not in person with everybody we're still connected online and to me this has been god's goodness in the yeah. midst of 
tragedy, in the midst of disease, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of chaos, you can still have a family. Yeah. And you're not alone. Right. And you can be connected. And Paul was in prison and he couldn't be with the Philippians. So what did he do? He wrote them a letter. So our online service is our letter to you each time, each week. Yeah. Our online Sunday is our letter to you when we're in the prison of pandemics or the prison of, well, not everybody, you know, most of the churches that have, for the few churches that have opened up around the country, they're only seeing 30% on average of their people returning because so many people are still wondering right. and they're still concerned and they're yeah. still unsure and there's still so much uh, information that keeps changing and the science keeps changing and the facts aren't always facts. Right. And, um, but to be able to have a spiritual family, to be able to be in covenant relationships yeah. where you know what, you're going through tough times, you're not alone. Yeah. You're going through good times, we wanna celebrate with you in the good times and you're going through tough times, we wanna weep with those that weep, we wanna support those that are going through whatever suffering that they're going through. Yeah. And um, we're all about connection, we're all about, and it's to, when I think about what Paul wrote to the Philippians, he couldn't be with them because he was in jail. We can't be in the same building right now um, maybe we can with a certain restriction and we're working through all of those things, but, but they could still communicate and they could still stay in touch and they could still connect through the letter that later became the letter of Philippians that is part of our Bible. This part of the Bible while Paul was in prison came as a result of his love mm. for the people that he couldn't be with, mm. but he wrote to them to thank God for them, yeah, to wow. tell them that he's praying for them, that he who began a good work in them is gonna finish it until the day of Christ Jesus. He said that he prayed for them every day. He said, don't feel bad for me because this is working to the furtherance of the gospel. Mm. In Philippians chapter one, verse 12, Paul said, even my chains and my imprisonment have worked to the furtherance or the greater progress of the gospel. I want you to know, I want you to know, I want our church family to know, I want you guys to know that what has happened in this world between the social ills that have existed, between the racial injustices that have existed, between the pandemic and the, and the COVID and all the financial things and jobs, people losing jobs and businesses, even in these circumstances, God is somehow finding a way to cause the gospel to have greater progress in your life and in our cities and in our nation and in our world. I know what the media reports, all of the negativity that is going on in this world, all the strife that exists even in our country. But we're a part of the solution to that. We're not observers of that to just let it be. We're the part of the solution of that to pray, to be connected, yeah. to stay in family, to stay in step with each other, to not let color divide us, to not let politics divide us, to not let uh, whatever is your difference of opinion to divide us because differences don't have to be divisions. Yeah. And that's one of the first things that God spoke to us in this church yeah. when the after the pandemic and after the first um, uh, flare up of, of racial tension that it just uncorked all that was underneath the surface of some of the pain that people have that carried mm. people have carried in our nation and in our world yeah, and we're totally. here to heal it totally we're here to heal it i want to talk about that i want to talk yeah. about healing society's pain awesome healing society's pain and I, we talked a little bit about that last week yeah 100 percent. i was just going to say one thing before yeah um on that last note that you were mentioning is that um it takes the church to spread the gospel and extend the gospel, not just the Sunday service. That's right. You know, and not just the, yeah. the church service and what happens in the building, but like now more than ever, like this is the time for the church members yeah. and the people of God to be the gospel and to, to be the light, you know? And so that's why connection is so massive and connection is so important. And being, being rooted, being planted, tuning in for every service, but then taking that and spreading it even more, you know? So I just wanted to echo what you were saying um, because there, there are like, who knows what kind of people there are that 
our letter from prison right. could impact and then their lives impact the rest of the world, that's you know? Right. So, so I, don't, I don't know, I just no, was I think being a little great. bit extra, but I We just are the it. church. We, we want, we, 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 we are, our goal is not to, just to get people to a church building. Right. That, that's something that God showed us that yes. we had been trying so hard to get people, not just life changers, but churches everywhere, trying to get people into the four walls of their buildings and here God is trying to tell us God's word to the sinner, God's word to the lost, God's word to the lost sheep, God's word to the broken, to the hurting is come. Yeah. But God's word to the church is go. Go into so your good. city, go into your community, go into your neighborhood, go into your family and take the gospel to them. And, to, and be, like Tyra said a couple weeks ago, be love. Yeah. Be yeah. love. Yeah. Don't just have love, be love. It's a, it's a verb, it's an action. And um, it's so essential that we stay connected. And it's so really, um, I, I, I'm very concerned for Christians who are drifting. Mm. And that's why we, we, we need a church family. Yeah. And I'm concerned for church members that are just waiting for something to happen rather than making something happen by being so love yeah. and being the gospel and taking the gospel. Yeah. And please know that we, we, we've learned and we're shifting as a church from just um, a campus structure of a church to both campus structure on our buildings and our, and our church buildings, but also from house to house. The Bible yeah. said in Acts chapter five and they, and they were preaching and teaching in the temple and from house to house, yeah. in the building and from house to house. They kept right on preaching Jesus and teaching Jesus as the Christ. The, the unbeliever needs to hear the preaching of Jesus and the believer needs to hear the teaching of Jesus. Right. And everybody needs to hear it and we need to let it out yeah. and get it, get it out there. And, and that's so why I love moments because we get raw, we get a little, you know, dirty, we roll up our sleeves yeah. and the way I kind of, you, cause you really, you really struck into some gold last week. And so I want to, you know, double click on that as yeah, we to say later. Yeah, let's do it. Um, but you struck into some gold and the way I saw it was like every morning, you know, for, for the average person, maybe not everybody, but every morning, typically we get up and we look in the mirror and we make sure we look good for the day and we do what we need to do for, to set ourselves up for the day. And that's how I see this. That's how I see these moments is like looking in the mirror and like before I enter into public, before I go into my job, before I go, wow. you know, and, and interact with my family further, I need to look in the mirror and just kind of, you know, make sure my hair is okay. Make yeah. sure my attitude's okay. Make yeah. sure my approach is right and just like regain that perspective. And so last night you were talking, or sorry, not last night, last week you yeah. were talking about, um, uh, uh, um, the building blocks yes. um, to getting along with everybody, with, with anybody, anybody, with yeah. anybody. Yeah. And so I would love if we could just kind of echo that um, tonight and break that down a little bit further and, and look in that mirror and kind of check ourselves and okay, like am I, is my love or my approach or my desire to, you know, for our world to have love, is that coming from the right building block for me? You know, right. and so I just, if that's cool. No, it's so good. It's absolutely, it's cool. And it's what we're gonna do for sure. And listen, I realize that as recent as today, there's controversy in our nation again. Yeah. Uh, as recent as a couple hours ago, there's controversy or whenever it was today, when um, a court uh, determined uh, the outcome of a recent killing right. of a black girl and I, I can't speak to that situation from a legal standpoint, but I can speak to the situation from a standpoint of empathy, and which is what our goal has been in this whole season is to really learn to understand each other and to learn to understand each other's pain and to learn to what we talked about the other day was the, the best definition for empathy um, that we that we established was the ability to communicate that incredibly healing message of you're not alone. Yeah. The ability to communicate that incredibly healing message of you're not alone. And I want you to know 
that no matter where you fall on the side of politics, no matter where you fall on the side of what's going on in our world today, there's so many things. What we need to fall on is our knees in gratitude, not just for God in our lives, but for one another. Mm. We need one another. Yeah. We need the community. We are not meant to isolate and run to our, to our side of the ring. We're not meant to be boxers in a ring to fight and then go to our corners. We're meant to stick together. We're meant to walk things out together. Mm. We're meant to be united and the devil is the divider. And he's been trying to divide man from God and man from one, from one another since Adam and Eve were created. And so in, in talking about the building blocks for getting along with anybody, I also believe these are the building blocks for healing our communities yeah. and healing our society. I love that. Because all, all, of the, all of society's pain, all society's pain is the byproduct of negative emotions. Mm. All pain comes from, in our society at least, comes from negative emotions. It started all in the Garden of Eden. So you have in Genesis 3, verse 10, Adam says, I heard your voice and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. So that's the first negative emotion that was introduced into the world. Right. Genesis 3, 16, God said, in sorrow, you're gonna bring forth children. So now we have fear in verse 10, we have sorrow in the, um, if you put that in the new King James version, you'll see, he says, in sorrow, you'll bring forth children. And then in Genesis chapter four, verse five, we have anger. In Genesis chapter four, verse five, it says Cain, uh, God did not respect Cain's offering and Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. Mm. And God says, why are you angry and why is your countenance fallen? He said, if you do well, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is to control you, but you must rule over it. You must, uh, in the New American, now back to the New American Standard, I'm tricking you guys on the, ver on the versions of the, of the Bible, but in the, <laughs> in the other version, it says, but you must master it. Genesis chapter four, verse seven, you must master the emotions. Mm. What are the emotions? The anger, the fear, the sorrow. He said, you gotta master that stuff or it will knock you out. It will, it will kick your butt. It will, it will damage you. It will defeat you. It, but she, he said, it's desire. It's crouching at the door and it, it, like, you know, crouching lion, crouching tiger, hidden dragon or whatever it was a few years ago many years ago, oh gosh, before your time. Uh, but um, it's like a, a tiger crouching, like just ready to jump upon you when you least expect it. That's what sin does. And the sin that he's talking about here is the sin of being controlled by your emotions, being controlled by your emotions. There's no, there's no sin in having emotions. Right but it's in being controlled by them. So that's why he says, be angry, but don't sin in Ephesians chapter uh, four. But so, so I want you to see that all this stuff started in the Garden of Eden. It started with the first four human beings in this world, and they were a family. They were a family hmm. and they had anger, depression, fear, murder. And they were a family of four. Yeah, right. And one out of four of them was killed. 25% murder rate in the Garden of Eden or right outside the Garden of Eden. The first four people in the world and in the earth. And they gave birth. So if we think, we, we can't think that it, there's not some work involved here mm. because they were a family. Right. And Adam and Eve started out without any sin in their life. And they still had the it's there's their they lost their power because they lost their minds, because they lost their emotions. Mm. And God wants to restore that. So in the building blocks of getting along with people, we got to realize how these things got broken down and what 
where these emotions came from. Yeah. Where did fear come from? Adam and Eve. Where did sorrow come from? Adam and Eve. Where did anger come from? Adam and Eve and Cain. Where did murder come from? Adam and Eve and Cain. That's where it came from. So all this stuff, fear, sorrow, inferiority, rejection, anger, violence, all negative emotions come from a sense of powerlessness. Now, this is where I'm going to get to the building blocks. Yeah, love it. If you feel powerless over your current situation, you're going to feel depression. Mm. If you feel powerless in a relationship or in an in, when an injustice has been done to you, you're going to feel anger. If you feel powerless about your future, you're going to feel afraid. You see, all negative emotions come from a sense of powerlessness. Yeah. So if we're going to heal, and if I could say this, that these are the emotions that have torn down families, torn down communities, torn down groups of people, torn down churches, torn down cities, torn down nations. These are the emotions that have pulled people apart. These are the emotions that have damaged people's relationships. These are the emotions that may be damaging your relationships right now, or maybe in a broken, severed relationship that you have. It's because of these negative emotions, because they rob you of your power. And when you give someone or some circumstance the power over your emotions, you have lost your power to 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 determine the outcome of your life. When you allow somebody else and what they do to you, when you allow that to control you, when you allow that to make you bitter, when they when you allow that to make you offended, yeah. when you allow that to make you angry, you're giving that person power. Yeah. And I want everybody to do something to tonight. Take your power back. Yeah. Take your power back. And together, this whole building block of community, this whole building block of relationship, this whole building block is all about having the power to not let anything divide us, having the power to love each other, having the power to make it through anything, to have, having the power to overcome whatever trial or whatever circumstance you're facing. And this is the ultimate goal, because because in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it says, if two of you shall agree about anything they ask, it shall be done for them by my father who's in heaven, Jesus said. If two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, <laughs> how about if we agreed right now about healing yeah. our nation from division? How about if we agreed right now and went to the father about healing from COVID and all the fear associated with it and all yeah. the confusion associated with it. How about if we go to the father in agreement about healing people's economies and their businesses and their families that have suffered, whether it's been through uh, because of COVID, whether it's been through some people have lost their lives through riots, some people have lost their lives through abuse of authority, all of those things. Guilt, we're all guilty of all yeah, of it, yeah. but we're all washed by the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And we have to use our power now to direct it towards getting things to change through prayer. If two of you agree about anything to ask, my father in heaven, Jesus said, he will do it for you. He will do it if you agree, he will do it for you. It just takes two. It starts there and then it multiplies. Right. Power to pray and to change things is what we're after. It's what we've been given. But that's the ultimate top of the building. <laughs> What's underneath the power? Where does the power come from? Agreement to agreeing. Where does the agreement come from? Well, we went through this whole building block. Where does the agreement come from? Understanding. You can't agree with somebody unless you understand them, right? Can't we can't agree in prayer unless we understand what we're praying for. Yeah. Can't agree in prayer unless we understand what is the goal? What do we want? What do we want to see happen in our nation? Mm. Do we want to see just somebody made an example of or do we really want to see real change? Do we want to see uh, continual strife in our nation over politics or do we want to lower the temperature and stop making politics such a big deal. You know, let's take abortion, for example, like it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me 
what the law states about abortion. Like my decision about abortion, like, like I have any decision to be made there, but my decision on abortion uh, is, it does, it's, 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 it's higher than what the government says. Yeah. It's higher than what the Supreme Court says. It's high. Now, I'm not saying that if you've had an abortion that you're lost and you're evil and no, there's total forgiveness. There's total yeah. healing. Yeah. There's total mercy. God is so good. God turns anything bad into something good. Yeah. But instead of us worrying about changing the laws, we should be focused on what does God want? We just sang the song. God, we want your heart. Right. We want your heart. So are we going to just talk about that we want God's heart? Come are we on. just going to vote Oof. to get power over somebody else? Or and we should vote. But ultimately, I'm not expecting how I live to be determined by a politician yeah. or a Supreme Court. Yeah. I'm expecting how I live to be determined by the love of God and the word of God. Yeah. And when the word of God and the love of God, when the word of God and the love of God is what rules us, we will not be mastered by our emotions anymore. So good. We won't take Abel's life anymore. Mm. We won't take our brother's life. Yeah. Hey, the first murder was among two brothers. It wasn't a white guy killing a black guy. It wasn't a black guy killing a black guy. It was a brother killing a brother. Yeah. And we have got to see that something is so much greater than color, and that's family. Yeah. And if you're born again, we're family. Yep. We're family. And I'm fighting for you. Yes. And one of the things that God said to Cain after he killed Abel, he said, hey, where's your brother? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? This is the problem. This is the curse that Jesus paid the price for so that we would not live under this curse of separation, separation from our brother. And I'm not, in, I'm not interested in my, I'm not responsible for my brother. Look, everybody's responsible for themselves, but we are responsible for knowing where each other are. Yeah. We are responsible to make sure that our kids are not hanging out with the wrong people. We are responsible to make sure that the people we care about are cared for, protected, and safe. Yeah. We are our brother's keeper. And my brother is not just the, 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 the man that I love who I grew up with as my brother. That's not my only brother. You're my brother. You're my brother. You're my, you're my, you're my, you're, I'm about to sing now, but I just took it down. I just about to go to a level that you weren't going to be able to handle. So I just, I just pulled back, oh Iris. You gosh. hear me, Iris? I pulled back, all right? I pulled back today on something that was going to go somewhere. <laughs> my day is coming, I'm telling you one day. Oh, wow. But you're my brother. You're my sister. We're family. Yeah. And he said, where is Abel, your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, what have you done? We've got to take up for one another. We've got to stick up for one another. Yeah. We've got to defend one another. Yeah. And we got to cover one another. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. And we have got to cover one another. We've got to pray for one another. And we have got to have each other's back, no matter yeah. color, no matter background, no matter age, none of that matters. We're family. We're family. Now, Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel were family. That didn't go so well, but we're redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We're the family of God now. We got it better than they had it. Yeah. We, didn't, we got it better because this one's irreversible. Mm. God's gifts are without repentance. God's gifts are irrevocable. So now we're family. We're stuck together. So let's stick together and let's stay connected and let's heal. Let's heal our communities. Let's heal our families. Let's heal our city. Yeah. Let's heal our nation. Let's heal. Jesus went about doing good. Remember, we were talking about that today. Yeah. It stuck out. We, we talked about it on Daily Bread, right? Yeah, Daily Bread. Uh, you were saying just start thinking about, like, what good can I do? That's Practically it. today, tomorrow, the next day. It's just practical. What, what good, good can, can I, I do? do? You know? 
um, and we need that. Uh, but something that you've also said in the past is that, and you're you're speaking on it now, is that Christianity is above politics. Yeah. It's, a, it's not. It, it's like Christianity isn't in that realm of you know order and and law and and whatever. Yeah. It we're above that, you know, and just law. as much as we're above diet preferences, just as right. much as Christianity is above um, uh, race, ethnicity. Yeah. Like God doesn't choose who he calls his children, he chooses everyone and it's our choice. And, and if we believe in our heart and we pray and confess with our mouth and we're saved, he doesn't, you know, um, categorize us. Right. You know? And so that's why, that's why Christianity and family is above those things, above, you know, the, the topics of abortion, politics, you know, God doesn't, God doesn't uh, see it that way, and so we can't see it that way. Right. We can't be, oh, well, you're, you're a, a Republican, so I have to classify you now as this person in yeah. my life. You're a Democrat, so I have to classify you as this person in my life. That's not how God is. And That's so right. that if we can, what you're talking about, if we can get to that level, then life is so much easier, you know? And we can, and so like, that's why I don't need, I don't need, like, I don't need the government to tell me do not murder. Right. Because if I love my brother, I'm not going to murder him. If I love my neighbor, who's not necessarily my brother, my neighbor might not be saved. But the Bible says, love your neighbor too, yeah. as yourself. So my, my neighbor might not be a Christian, but I'm still responsible to love. Love is higher than everything. Yeah. Love is love higher. Love is where we live. We live. We lead with love, yeah. we live with love, we serve with love. Love is what is the crowning achievement of all because when it comes to the power that we talked about, the goal of the building block is we're after power. Why? We, we want the power to be able to agree and so that we can see the love of God show up. When we pray for a family, when we pray for somebody who's sick, when we pray for somebody whose life is broken, when we pray for somebody's finances, us agreeing in what we're praying for them about, that's the manifestation of love, mm. is that we're gonna use our power to bring heaven to that person's life. Yeah. We're gonna bring heaven into that person's finances, we're gonna, bring, we're gonna use our power, the power of agreement, we're gonna use that power to bring heaven into that person's body, we're gonna bring heaven into that person's home, we're going to bring heaven into that person's emotional condition. Yeah. That is the highest level of love is that we're bringing heaven into people's lives here on this earth. Yeah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we can pray. And God says, if you agree about put that verse back up in Matthew 18, 19, if two of you shall agree about anything here on earth and anything they ask on earth, we're talking about Earth now again. I know this seems like why are you making such a big deal about Earth? Because we, that's where we live. I say if two of you agree on Earth, this isn't for when you get to heaven. This right. is on Earth. Right. It's now. And he says about anything they may ask, it shall be done for them by my father who's in heaven. So what he's saying is he's saying when you have this power of agreement going, then you literally have the power to bring heaven into this Come earth. Come on. He says, you're on earth. The father's in heaven, but the father's going to do it while he's in heaven. He's going to do it for you while you're on earth. Yeah. This is how to express love is that we would pray and agree together. And we're going to do this at the end of the service in a few moments that we would agree together about the things that matter most. In the essentials, let there be unity. In the non-essentials, let there be liberty. But in all things, let there be charity. And charity is love. Mom. Charity is love. Yeah. It's love. So that's why we want power. Yeah. Where does power come from? Agreement. Where does agreement come from? Understanding. How will we have understanding? By having empathy. And what is empathy? Empathy, the best definition I could come up with, best definition, I researched this, I've studied this word, this concept, this thought, the ability to communicate that incredibly healing message of 
you're not alone. The ability to communicate that incredibly healing message that you're not alone. Yeah. So if you, if I'm sending that message to you, if I'm sending that message to you, that I'm, I'm sending a message to you that's incredibly healing right now, and I'm saying to you, you're not alone. What that does is that lowers all of our defenses. Yeah. And that gives us the power now to agree together about anything. And there's no wall between us. There's no division among us. Yeah. There's nothing keeping us against each other, dividing us because of empathy. Yeah. And then empathy comes as we also empathy creates communication. Now we're communicating. Communication comes from listening. You can't communicate if you don't listen. Yeah, it's two way. It's two ways. Yeah. And you got to start with it's one way. I'm a listener first, right? Like if everybody starts as I'm a listener first, you know what? Life will be a little quieter. <laughs> if everybody says I'm a listener first, there's going to be less yelling. There's going to be less talking. And you know what? Less talking is actually healthier than more talking because the Bible says where there are many words, sin is inevitable. Jeez. Sin is unavoidable <laughs> where there are many words. Proverbs says, wow, you guys can find that verse. Someone's probably looking that up right now. <laughs> Lickety split, man. Boom. So, but if we listen, but you're not going to listen to me and I'm not going to listen to you if I don't respect you. Right. And I'm not going to respect you if I don't value that you are a child of God yeah. made in the image of God right. and made for him and for his glory that I just happened to be and your mother happened to be the, the, the people that brought you into this earth. But God was the one that sent you mm. into this earth and see, I value that. So I value you like I happen to be the pastor, but God sent me to you to be your pastor. God sent you to me to pray with you, to agree with you, to believe with you. You see, if we if we turn these building blocks upside down and we start at the bottom, it all starts with value. Yeah. Matthew, Ch Matthew 10, 21. I think Jesus said, you're so much more valuable than the birds of the air, mm. you're so much more valuable than the than the sparrows. You're so, you're he says you're so much more valuable than animals. You're so much more valuable than silver and gold. You're the Bible says you're you have more value than all the riches of this world. Each of us has that value. Yeah. Every bit of love and every bit of power and every bit of healing for our city. It's it comes when we start valuing human life yeah. as made in the image of God. Value causes you to respect. Respect puts you in a position to listen. Listening causes you to have effective communication. Right. Communication creates empathy and an opportunity for empathy to communicate the, that incredibly healing message that you're not alone. Yeah. Empathy causes there to be understanding understanding causes there to be agreement. And then, man, we asked That's in agreement good. in that spirit. Yeah. Now we have power. Yeah. Now we have power. Whoever gets elected, that doesn't give us power. That doesn't give you power. If your guy doesn't get elected, you still have this power. Yeah. You have the power to bring heaven Come on. to earth. And the father himself is the one who said he will do it. The father himself. Jesus said the father himself is going to while he's in heaven is going to give you what you two are asking for while you're on earth. So don't you see? Yeah, this is how to love people is that we use our power to bring agreement and to see things change through prayer. Heaven needs to kiss this earth today. Yeah. Yeah. Not 
whoever the president is, right. not whatever the decision is in a court situation, not whoever, you know, is the new Supreme Court justice, not whoever, not whoever is guilty or innocent in, in all the different cases that we've witnessed and we've been mortified by and been in pain over the suffering that anybody has. Any, I, I'm, I'm in, in pain over the suffering of Brianna, I'm in pain over the suffering of George, I'm in pain over the suffering of these police officers, I'm in pain for all of them. And Jesus is, Jesus isn't yeah. like, uh, I feel his pain, but I don't feel hers. Oh, I feel that person's pain, but I don't feel that person's pain. Oh, you know what, I just saw that you, you wrote Democrat on your political ticket, I can't feel your pain. Oh, oh, you're a Republican now, I can't feel your pain either. Like. The Bible says he is touched with your feelings. He's not touched with your politics. He's touched with your so feelings. Good. Wow. He's touched by what you feel. Hebrews 4, 15. We have a high priest who is touched by our feelings. Yeah. He's touched by our feelings. He's touched by your feelings. And he said that not only is he touched with our feelings, our weaknesses, he was tempted in all things, yet without sin. That's why verse 16 says, we can therefore come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And that's what we're gonna agree about. So yeah. in review, the building blocks, value is the beginning, it causes respect. Respect causes listening. Listening causes communication. Communication creates empathy. Empathy is that incredible healing message that you're not alone. Now we have understanding. Now we can come into agreement. And when we are in agreement, we can activate heaven's power come on. by going to him and two of us agreeing, two of us agreeing, two of us agreeing, and we can go to the father in Jesus name and he will do it come on. from heaven in earth. And if we love our country, if we love our community, if we love our city, if we love the people that we're get to, that we get to do life with, call it called our church family, then we will use our love to pray and to bring heaven's power yeah. into our earthly situations. OK, I so love that. We, you ready for that? I want that, yeah. Let's do that. So first, we're going to agree together. For anybody who's not saved, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, first, we're agreeing for you, because we want you in agreement with us. We want to see you in heaven, and we want to pray with you for some power in just a moment. But first, get saved. First, everyone is separated from God because of sin. Jesus comes, becomes sin for us, and creates a bridge between you and the Father. Jesus dies for your sins so that God doesn't see your sins anymore. Yeah. He just sees you because yeah. he loves you so. Yeah. Would you just receive Jesus right now? Pray with me, just pray. Heavenly Father, just pray that out loud right where you're sitting. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus Christ into my life, into my life. as my Savior and Lord. As my Savior and Lord. I believe. I believe. Jesus died for my sins. Jesus died for my sins. And rose from the dead. And rose from the dead. I believe. I believe. Your blood washes. Your blood washes. All my sins away. All my sins away. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. I'm your child. I'm your child. I'm your son or daughter. And you're my father. And you're my father. Amen. Amen. You know, a miracle has happened. Whether you feel anything or not, a miracle has happened because you invited Jesus yeah. to come into your life. There's a there's a web website, uh, my, our church website. There's a link that you can click and you'll get my book, Power of a New Life. It's absolutely free. It's the next steps yeah. now of the Christian life. And I want you to get that. And I really want you to. And I want you to know all of heaven is celebrating you right now. Come on. All of heaven is celebrating you right now. And I love you and I'm proud of you. And I want to hear from you. Did you pray that prayer? I want to hear from you. Message me, get a message to me any way you want. I want to hear from you. Now, we're going to agree together for everybody. Yeah. And we're going to agree together for healing our society. Yeah. And we're going to the Father 
together. Come on. I want you to be united. I want you to be united. We're going to be united. <laughs> yeah. If we agree about anything on earth that we ask for, our Father in heaven will give it to us yeah. if we agree. Let's pray together right now. Just say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come into agreement. I come into agreement. With my church family. With my church family. And I believe, and I believe that you have given us power. That you have given us power to bring heaven to earth. To bring heaven to earth in our society. In our society. And we are asking you. We are asking to you kiss this earth. To kiss this earth with revival. With revival. A revival of your love. A revival of your. A love. revival of unity. A revival of unity. A revival of togetherness. A revival of. A revival of commitment. A revival of. Commitment. A revival of evangelism. A revival of evangelism. A revival. Revival. of church community of church community a revival a revival of your goodness of your goodness a revival a revival in our cities in our cities we ask you we ask and you. we agree and we agree for healing our world for healing our world of this corona disease corona covid disease, covid all the sicknesses and flus associated with it we activate we activate freedom freedom and healing and healing and clarity and clarity and we pray against the confusion we pray against confusion that has surrounded this topic that has surrounded this topic now we pray now we pray for healing in our nation for healing in our nation heal our racial divisions heal our racial divisions heal us from our prejudices heal us from our prejudices heal us from our discrimination heal us from our discrimination forgive us forgive us we receive your forgiveness we receive through your the blood of jesus the blood of jesus and now heal our land and lord heal our land we pray for healing pray for healing for every family member for every family member that has suffered this summer that has suffered this summer through death through death through injustice through injustice through sickness through sickness through disease through disease you feel their pain you feel jesus. their pain jesus and we ask you to heal their pain we ask you to heal their pain and we agree together we agree together for our church community for our church community to have unity to have unity to have no divisions among us to have no divisions among to us to celebrate our differences to celebrate our differences but to refuse to tolerate division. But to refuse to tolerate divisions. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank for you. For the upcoming elections. The upcoming elections. That people will be led by peace. People will be led by peace. Led by your spirit. Led by your spirit. Led by love. Led by love. We pray against violence. We pray against violence. We pray against crime. We pray against crime. We pray against anger. We pray against And anger. we use our power. And we use our power. To ask you for the power of heaven. To ask you for the power of heaven. To blanket our nation. To blanket our nation. With peace. With peace. The peace of God. The peace of God. We speak and we say. We speak and we say. Peace be still. Peace be still. To the raging waters. The raging waters. In our emotions. In our emotions. Peace be still. Peace be still. To the raging waters. To the raging waters. In our finances. In our finances. Peace be still. Peace be still. To the raging waters. To the raging waters. Of our relationship. Of our relationship. We say peace be still. Peace be still. To the raging waters. To the raging waters. Of our cities. Of our cities. And our nations. And our nations. And the politics. And the politics. We say peace. We say peace. Be still. Be still. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the Come praise. Come on, let's just thank him right now Amen. for his goodness and his love. <laughs> that's how, that's how we do it. Yeah. Even if we didn't do it all perfectly right, <laughs> this is how to do it. Yeah. And this is how we go forward in love, in power, and in agreement. Amen. 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 There you go. We love you guys so much. Love Don't you forget guys. these building blocks of getting along and bringing healing to our world. Yes. We need this. Um, stay tuned. Don't miss a moment. Don't miss Sunday. We'll see you then. Can't and, wait. Uh, until then, we love you. Love you guys. See you soon.